morning guys it is saturday morning at 8 30 a.m and clearly i'm a morning person but i'm actually just awake because doo -doo -doo -doo, it is wash day it's clearly not looking so good i'm about to engage in the marathon that is the maximum hydration method and i'm doing it for you so the least you could do is come to the kitchen with me and make a cup of tea first all right come on Let me drink this and let's get started because we're gonna be in this for the long haul. So the maximum hydration method is a pretty cool, although very long, process that instills moisture into the hair in order to define the curls and ringlets that can be present in hydrated type four natural hair. All right guys, so since we're gonna be at this roughly for the next 46, 47 hours, we might as well get to know our products pretty well. So the first step is the cleansing step. It's a mixture of baking soda, conditioner, and water. I use Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle Conditioner. I love this conditioner because it's super cheap, it's easy on my pockets, and I find the conditioner ingredients are truly good. Your next step is your co-wash step, and it's simply a mix of water and the conditioner. This time, no baking soda. Now for the clay. This step is gonna be the step where you actually see what texture your hair is going to assume at the end of the process. So this step is probably gonna have you feeling yourself just a little bit, and that's okay. There will be no judgment from me. Next up is our leave-in conditioner. Now typically I use Kinky Curly Knot today. I use that on both my hair and on other people's hair that I have purchased that is on loan to me. I love that product, but recently I haven't been able to find it, so I'm trying Natural Club's Avocado Leave-In Conditioner. Now the next step is the gel step. This is a step that's going to steal in all that moisture and then also keep your curls in place. Today I have chosen to use flaxseed gel, but honestly, flaxseed gel is a little bit fickle. It's like that girl who we all knew in middle school who would be your friend one day and then the next day pretend she didn't know you even though you slept over at her house the night before. Flaxy gel can act a little funny, but more on that later. So now that I have my products on standby, I'm ready to start the clarifying step. So here I'm just saturating my hair with water, getting it nice and soaked and ready to use that product. I don't know why, but for some reason I feel compelled to do one of those. If you guys are wondering where I got my bathing suit then, so if you guys are wondering where I got my bathing suit from, don't. It was probably like $12. I don't know when I bought it, where I bought it from, or why I bought it because it's not the most appealing article of clothing I own. But back to the reason that we're here. So I've applied the baking soda cleanser to my hair and to my scalp. So I do try with this method to do a little bit of scrubbing of my scalp. Since I'm not using a traditional shampoo, I figure I can try to manually release some of that dirt and build up from the week. But as you guys know, I do not get crazy with this because your girl is tender headed. If I told you once, I told you twice. So for those who are curious, I will point out that the maximum hydration method does allow for an alternate option for your cleansing step. You can, instead of doing a baking soda based cleanser, you can do an apple cider vinegar based cleanser. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the cleanser in my hair for 15 minutes before I come back and rinse it out. So here I am rinsing out the cleansing step and moving on to the co-wash step. Now for those of you who may be wondering why I specifically chose a baking soda based cleanser, it's really not based on anything more than the fact that I hate the smell of vinegar. There are really very few things in this world that could get me to put apple cider vinegar on my hair and leave it sitting there funky, smelling like Italian dressing for 15 whole minutes. Uh-uh. So I've spread the co-wash throughout my hair, trying to make sure that I concentrate things on the ends of my hair. I'm going to leave it on for 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and wash it out. 
You guys really don't need to sit here and watch me rinse this out of my head. Let's just keep it going. Here I am excited to finally be dry, giving you <laughs> Angela Bassett in Black Panther vibes with my towel and my probably $7 bathing suit. So I'm going to put my hair up in a quick ponytail and then I'm going to start by sectioning small chunks of hair at the nape of my neck and I'm going to take a deep breath because like I said guys, this process is a marathon. So here I have some Rasool clay mixed with some water. It's a kind of like a chocolate pudding texture. I don't have any fancy measurements for you. I really just stick my hand in the jar and mix it with water and kind of squish it around a la, you know, kindergarten finger paint style. So I'm sectioning out these small sections, trying to rake the clay mixture through, really coating the hair well, and I'm really going to rake it through until I can see that curl pattern emerging. I am just going to do the same thing, continuing throughout the entirety of my very large head. It is going to take me probably around 15 minutes, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So I scowl a lot when I'm doing my hair. It is a combination of the tenderheadedness, my Jamaican ancestry, and my nearsightedness. Please pay no attention to it. It is not a sign of anger or frustration. I think I'm jamming out to the One Tree Hill theme song, better known as I Don't Wanna Be by Gavin DeGraw. Take a listen. It's very good. Throwback. you know that moment where you're home alone and you're in the shower or you're in the bathroom and then you hear a noise and you're like who's that Samantha that was just the moment that I had just now if you were wondering why my eyes were so shifty after I finish with the clay step sometimes I like to go back over with any excess clay mixture that I have and just define the curls a little bit more but you can see the curls are super defined super mobile it's kind of a cool experience seeing your hair like that if you never have the other thing I love about the Rasool clay is that this brown color actually works pretty well with my skin tone I think uh, not to toot my own horn but I, I kind of like it so here's some of that definition, just giving you a little close-up, just serving you a little, uh, a little look-see there. But yeah, we're gonna leave this in for 15 minutes, and then we're gonna come back and rinse it out. So here I am, rinsing out the clay mixture, and one thing that you will notice here is that I try to touch my hair as minimally as possible. I am really trying to maintain as much of that curl pattern as possible. So it's all just passive rinsing. Just, just imagine those kind of like, you know, waterfall videos and the spa type music. You're just, you're just letting the gentle waterfall cascade over your hair and just rinse out that, that rasul clay and you take a deep breath and uh, Oh, sorry, I, th I got a little carried away. But like I said, we are really just letting the shower do the work. So it does take a little bit of time, but honestly, like I've said multiple times, this is a time commitment process. So what's an extra three minutes in the grand scheme of the two and a half weeks that we've been at this? So here I am fresh out of the shower and you can see that even with the clay rinsed out I'm still getting a good amount of curl definition so I'm showing you that as I'm stretching a curl you can kind of see it snap back you can see that little zigzag pattern pretty well and definitely better than it usually is. So the method does work. So I am going to put in some leave-in conditioner and come back for the gel step. So the gel step really is similar to the clay step. Starting with my hair in a high ponytail, I'm going to pull out small sections and shingle the gel using that same raking motion until I complete my entire head of hair. So like I was saying at the beginning of the video, flaxseed gel really, it takes a very tender touch. If you boil it a little too long, it gets super thick and it gives you great curl definition and great hold, but then also leaves you with flaking and crusting that really is just not attractive. 
but then sometimes you don't boil it enough and you get this really thin watery product that doesn't give you any hold so it's just very very touchy so honestly guys you know we're we're trying to build a relationship here and every relationship is based off truth and trust sometimes if my flaxseed gel is not treating me right i will pull out from my drawer a jar of eco styler gel because you know what you can say what you want you can call it a lot of things but you cannot call it inconsistent eco styler gel will give you the definition that you're looking for every single time and i dare you to challenge me on that it may not be the best for your hair i will fully recognize that it's a dollar store product you know it's it's a it's a pharmacy over the counter product and so you you may get what you pay for but honestly if flaxseed gel is like that girl who was fickle on you in middle school eco styler gel is like that friend you probably shouldn't have been hanging out with maybe the friend was a bad influence but you could always you could always know that you were in for a good time that's eco styler gel so let's fast forward here because it's really just the same process throughout my entire head so I finished shingling the gel in throughout my entire head. And then just like I did with the clay, I'm gonna go back over some parts, smoothing the gel throughout my hair, just to get a little bit of that extra definition. We have the time, so let's do it. So here's the finished product. Sparkle, sparkle, twinkle, twinkle, turn, turn, turn. 28 days later, we have finished. So what do I think of the maximum hydration method? And it's a little bit of a complicated answer. On the one hand, the results are pretty good. Kind of feeling myself a little bit. You get pretty good curl definition, although there is some variability in there. But on the other hand, it is tedious. It is not a short process and it is definitely not for the lazy natural. Each step takes at least 15 minutes and that includes the two shingling processes. And it doesn't include the time that it takes to rinse your hair in between steps. It doesn't include the time that it takes to hop in and out of the shower or to put your head under and out of the sink. It is not a small commitment. So with all of that, I probably would say it's not a long-term type of regimen. It's probably more of like something that you would embark on for a few months, a few weeks, just to get your hair right, to get your curls popping. But after that, you're probably gonna drop in. With all that said, I like it. I mean, it's definitely a tool that I've had in my arsenal for quite some time, especially when my hair's not in a great place. So I'll probably continue to use it, at least for the time being. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe so that when I post a new video, you can be the first one to watch it. All right, guys, bye.